As part of moves to strengthen the agricultural policies of this administration, the federal government has awarded a contract for the construction of a 36-kilometer link road between Benue and Enugu State. Minister of Power, Works and Housing Babatunde Fashola made this known after the Federal Executive Council meeting held at the ASO Presidential Villa Abuja on Wednesday. Fashola said the construction of the 9th Mile Otukbo Road, which links Enugu to Benue State, is a major agrarian connectivity in support of agriculture and movement of farm produce. It was for the uh, 9th Mile uh, Bokolo section of the Ninth Mile Otukuru that links Enugu State to Benue State. The Benue section is already under construction, so what we've just done is to connect, award the 36 kilometers that connects the Enugu section to the road. This is a major agrarian uh, connectivity in support of our agricultural policy. So council approved that memorandum. The award was to the existing contractor who is already working on the Benway section. So we should have a seamless deployment of uh, machine and uh, materials to site. Uh, we expect that this should be completed in 24 months. Contract sum is 5.44 billion naira. A memo for the completion of infrastructural works and total utilization of the Namde Azikwe International Airport in Abuja, presented by the Minister of State Aviation, Hadi Srika, also got approval from the Council. So in our efforts to uh, deal with those challenges, we are uh, putting up an independent uh, power uh, system at the airport, which has been uh, approved by FEC uh, today. And uh, subsequently, we will also turn to the uh, water supply challenges, sewer challenges, connectivity between the old and the new terminal, the apron size and all the um, fire station that is blocking the usage of the apron and perhaps also the control tower that is, um, cannot see the other side of the airport. All of this will be tended to in phases in preparatory to full utilization of the airport. Minister of Information and Culture, Alaji Lai Mohammed and his aviation counterpart also made some remarks concerning the plans by the federal government to establish colonies for headsmen. We want to what is the difference between uh, a colony and the and the cattle ranch. Well, I'm not I'm not a, an agricultural expert. But I know that a colony is much bigger. All I can assure you is that uh, the government is very very concerned about uh, the headsmen and farmers' clashes, and it's receiving um, attention at the highest level. Growing up uh, in the hinterland uh, where I grew up, there used to be cattle roots and uh, colonies, we call them brutally in the local language. And uh, this is a uh, federal government established from 1914, cattle roots, where they follow, where they graze, where they feed, where they drink water. And when that one was available, there was no farmer uh, uh, herdsman clash because the routes are specific, are uh, identified, are mapped, and are paid for for compensation over time. But I think due development, due increase in population, these uh, lands perhaps are either captured or made part of farm. But I, I think the, the, the question as to colony or grazing land or brutally as they are called, is about the same thing really. So, and I don't think government would do anything without a cost to uh, owners of farmlands and uh, rules of the country or laws of the land. Wednesday's Federal Executive Council meeting, presided over by President Muhammadu Buhari, is the first for the year 2018. From the ASO Presidential Villa Abuja, I am Festus A. Jiroga Nefifen for Ben Television. Governor of Benue State, Samuel Otwan, who made the announcement after a meeting with the federal government, other state governors, and security agents that lasted for more than six hours in Abuja. As part of the outcome of the meeting, he warned that citizens should not politicize the matter between the headsmen and farmers and calls for a collective measure to ending further attacks by the headsmen. There is now synergy. 
with the security agencies, the federal government and the state government to support this challenge. There are more deployment of the military, more deployment of the police, uh, special forces of the police. There is uh, a chopper on ground to make air surveillance and uh, more equipment are being deployed and more of uh, logistics are also being uh, provided to ensure that we support this. On his part, Taraba State Governor Darius Isakwang, whose state is also affected with the attacks by the headsmen, insisted that granting is the way forward in putting to an end to the crashes between the headsmen and farmers. Today, I think the ranching is still the best option. Uh, you don't want people to die because they want to rear a new farm. Uh, it's an unnecessary killing. I think uh, more and more of Nigerians, both the husbands and the farmers, need more education to know that they have to coexist together. And uh, domesticating our animals makes it better, more so that our population which in those days, in the 50s, were just learning us out of it. Because I've seen it done in Kenya, I've seen it done in other African countries, and I think it's possible here in Nigeria. It's only that we over-publicize this, and we engineer people politically to be to hate one another. Uh, this is here that we say it's a win-win thing. We have already put together a program called Agro Rangers, the training of whom the Ministry of Interior will undertake, and their job is to protect agricultural investments wherever they exist. Nothing is more painful than for a farmer, be he or she a herdsman or a grain producer, to have his or her life threatened by circumstances in the practice of his or her profession. We do not want the farmer to lose his crops, nor do we want anyone in the guise of a headsman to hurt a farmer. For the two governors, anti-grazing bill recently passed by Benue State, which prohibits open grazing, will be the only way forward in putting to an end the clashes between the farmers and headsmen. In Abuja, LM Chugamuka reports. Lovely place, right? Yes. What's wrong? You don't look happy. Take a look around. Why can't my hotel be like this? I knew something was wrong, but I've got solution. Solution? What? Nanet. Nanet? Nanet offers you design solutions, building plans and construction, furnishing and equipping, financing, management, audit services, and many more services for a better hospitality business. Nanet, service with a smile. Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board Jump had decried low registration of candidates even as it faced the 2018 Unified Tertiary Matriculation Examination UCME from March 9 to 18, 2018. Registrar and Chief Executive Officer of the Board, Professor Isha Koloyede, disclosed this in Abuja at a strategic planning on supervision and evaluation of the conduct of 2018 meeting. He said February 6th had been scheduled for the closing of sales of the registration form, lamenting that, as at the time of the report, only 283,319 registrations have been made across the country so far. Our sales of floor, between 6th of December and 6th of February, 6th of December and 6th of February, the last one of us,
Fona lamented that in the last year examination regime, candidates spent about 100 million for correction of errors caused by computer-based test centers, stating that the board had gone ahead to correct the situation in advance to the candidates. In Abuja, LM Chukwamika reports. Nigeria economic growth is expected to age up to at least 2.5% in 2018 as the country benefits from improved commodity prices, investment and trade, according to World Bank forecasts. The 2018 Global Economic Prospect Report launched on Tuesday in Washington, D.C. Nigeria's gross domestic product, GDP, is expected to grow by 2.8% in 2019 and 2020. The World Bank forecasts that global economic growth will go up to 3.1% in the year 2018. Growth in Sub-Saharan Africa is projected to continue to rise to 3.2% in 2018 and to 3.5% in 2019 on the back of firming commodity prices and gradually strengthening domestic demand. However, the report showed that growth will remain below pre-crisis averages, partly reflecting a struggle in larger economies to boost private investment. Nigeria is anticipated to accelerate to a 2.5% rate this year from 1% growth in the year just ended. An upward revision to Nigeria's forecast is based on expectation that oil production will continue to recover and that reforms will lift non-oil sector growths. Also in the report, South Africa is forecast to kick up to 1.1% growth in 2018 from 0.8% in 2017. The recovery is expected to solidify as improving business sentiment supports a modest rise in investment. Growth in Angola is expected to increase to 1.6% in 2018 as a successful political transition improves the possibility of reforms that ameliorate the business environment, while Côte d'Ivoire is forecast to expand by 7.2% in 2018, Senegal by 6.9%, Ethiopia by 8.2%, Tanzania by 6.8%, and Kenya by 5.5% as inflation eases.